Hello, everyone, and happy February to all of you. Tomorrow is Groundhog Day, which means we are exactly halfway through the winter. The winter solstice was just about six weeks ago, and the spring equinox is just about six weeks from now. So I hope your winter has not been too rough, especially for those of you in Europe. Um, I did see that you had some balmy weather the beginning of January, and we did too here. But today, we're back to winter. I think it was five degrees this morning. So I had uh, a bunch of questions for February, but because the one that I chose uh, was so long and, and complex, I ended up with only two. So we have two questions for this month. Um, the first question is, can we get some insight into Joe Biden? And what are we to learn from him? That's question number one. Question two, what do we need to know about the alternative media and what is their real role at this time? And the cards drawn for these two were for question number one, was the high priestess for Joe Biden. And question number two about alternative media was the page of pentacles, which I think turned out to be perfect. So let's... Uh, Let's look at question number one. Can we get some insight into Joe Biden and what we are to learn from him? And of course, of all the cards I could have drawn in response to a question about Joe Biden, the high priestess was the last one I would have expected to show up. However, since the question included this little tag at the end, what are we to learn from him? The high priestess has a pretty powerful message. So the high priestess is arguably the most powerful card in the tarot deck. Already, we are warned that this is possibly the most powerful lesson we will have as a nation. What you see when you look at the card is a woman, and she's wearing a crown made of three moons, one full moon and two crescent moons, one waxing, the other waning. In her lap is a scroll with the word Torah on it, T-O-R-A. And she's wearing this beautiful flowing blue robe. At her feet is a set of horns representing Taurus the bull, and the horns are also in the shape of another crescent moon. A lot of moon influence in this card. She is sitting in front of a curtain or a screen that is covered with pomegranate and pineapple designs. And on each side of her is a pillar. One pillar is black and labeled with a B for Boaz. And the other is white and labeled with a J for Joaquin. Or sometimes people will say Joaquin. Um, but the pillars have lilies carved into them around the top, near the top. And there is a cross on her chest. And the background of the card is blue. There is so much represented in this card. Keywords, let's start with keywords um, associated with the high priestess are number one, big time intuition. Intuition, intuition, intuition. Spiritual awareness. Mystery. Hidden knowledge. And the revelation of secrets. Other associations are the oppression of the people by a ruling class, human rights, women's rights, fluctuation, and change. High Priestess carries a powerful message for everyone, and it says, become aware 
of what your intuition is telling you, then establish your own opinion and live by it. But be aware that what you think and what you believe is what becomes your reality. So the message overall here is, yeah, you know, live by what you think and believe. Um, you're going to end up teaching yourself <laughs> because you're going to create exactly what's in your mind. And then you're going to have to live with it. And then you will learn from it. So the high priestess goes on to warn. And, and this is a pretty powerful message here. Let the dead bury the dead and their obedience to old ways. Give yourself and others the chance to discover who you really are. End quote. Let me read that again. Let the dead bury the dead and their obedience to old ways. Give yourself and others the chance to discover who you really are. Wow. <laughs> Let the dead bury the dead, huh? This tells us that those who refuse to change their thinking or to recognize the real changes going on all around them, those who refuse to adopt new ways of seeing and being, they are the walking dead. Their bodies are alive and moving, but their minds and their hearts are not. They will bury themselves under mountains of poor results and problems brought about by their poor decisions and refusal to change or act in harmony with what the situation calls for today. Don't bury yourself. The crown. Let's look at the crown on the high priestess. The crown of three moons represents three stages of development in humans, as well as their cities and their empires. The waxing or beginning stage, the peak of that empire, that's the full moon, and the waning stage, when the empire is past its prime and things are falling apart. In the female human, those stages are often referred to as maiden mother crone, and for males, youth father elder. So the crown raises two questions. One, have you assessed what stage of development you are at? Have you assessed what stage of development you are at? The other question is, are you able to perceive what is happening in your city, state, and nation, and what stage we are at as a group? And are you making decisions that are in alignment with that truth? Other questions also arise. Are we seeing what we're supposed to be seeing in Joe Biden? Is he a good president? Are we looking for a presidential sugar daddy that will feed us, give us money, an allowance to pay our bills? Do we want to live in ignorance of how things work behind the scenes and what is the danger in doing so? Are we satisfied with governance that makes all the decisions for us? Do we want to be left with no power because we have no idea how things really work and we've refused to take up the yoke of responsibility? Remember, if you aren't willing to take responsibility, you're never going to have any power. Those two things go together. Moving on. The high priestess is holding a scroll in her lap with the word Torah, T-O-R-A, on it. That word, Torah, represents esoteric or hidden knowledge. And the scroll emphasizes or symbolizes 
the book of life. It reminds us that we are free to write the story of our own life and the esoteric knowledge invites us to move into ever-expanding stages of consciousness. There are many, many worlds. And those that are based on higher states of consciousness can only be entered by acquiring experience in the physical world and wisdom in the esoteric world. In order to enter these worlds, we must make the decision to do no harm and commit ourselves to cooperation, joy, creativity, and lifelong learning, which implies lifelong change, lifelong becoming. And that's among many other beneficial decisions. So we are we're being invited to write our own story. Are we doing it? The flowing blue robe represents the flow of emotion, oceans of emotion, oceans of feeling, thought, and action that give us the ability to craft a world of our own choosing by developing the full potential of our human existence. What is that potential? It's to become a creator of worlds using the power of consciousness. And this brings up the question, who is creating the world we find ourselves in? Is it us? Is it Joe Biden? Or someone else who's completely hidden from view? At the bottom of the card, right at her feet, we see the horns of Taurus the bull which are, again, in the shape of the crescent moon. Taurus is a symbol of the ancient matriarchy. This unusual combination of the very masculine bull's horns and the very feminine crescent moon hints at the need for women to stand up and balance the raw mechanical power of the patriarchy with the soft intuitive power of matriarchal consciousness. Taurus itself represents the earth. It represents nature, fertility, and material abundance. And the moon symbolizes intuition, creativity, wisdom and compassion neither aspect patriarchy or matriarchy masculine or feminine neither aspect is balanced or complete without the other and civilizations that stay out of balance for too long will collapse i think now we come to what i think is the most Interesting thing about this card um, and our question about Joe Biden. So if you look at the card, you'll see a curtain or screen hanging behind the high priestess between the two pillars. This curtain or screen represents the veil of illusion that separates us from the great ocean of intelligence, also known as source or God, or what I sometimes call the soup. So the screen represents the movie screen of the mind onto which we project our ideas, our attitudes, images, actions, and dreams, all of which we use to build a personal reality. And in doing that, we contribute to the group reality. So. As mentioned, the curtain is what separates us from that great ocean of love, wisdom, power, and grace that we have full access to. So this raises the question, why is it that we seldom bother to pull aside the curtain 
and reconnect with that great love and that great intelligence that we are made of and that we're floating in. Is it because we're hypnotized by the images on the screen? What kind of activity is so fascinating that we forget who we are and what we are part of? The answer is in the pomegranates and the pineapples on the curtain because they symbolize prosperity, the race for prosperity, relationships, and sexuality, especially sexual activity that goes on behind our backs or out of our awareness. The pomegranates are especially significant because they represent the great power of a fertile imagination which is what we use to create and shape reality in an ongoing manner. We're making the reality and our response to all the stuff happening shapes it continuously. So the curtain also represents hidden activity going on behind the curtain, <laughs> behind the narrative put forth by the Biden administration. This narrative demands discernment. What is appearing on the screens of our phones and laptops may not be real, and it may not have our best interests at heart, which, of course, some of us are well aware of. But that's what that curtain is telling us. You who look behind the curtain. The warning, however, the warning of the high priestess is that we must stop the hypnosis long enough to go within, reach for clarity, and stop pretending that we don't or can't see what Joe Biden is teaching us. After all, the pineapple has many eyes that cover its outer surface and which we are meant to be using to see, hear, feel, and know. We look at what's happening in Washington, D.C. We see, we know. Stop fooling yourself. And all this leads us to look at the two pillars from which the curtain is hanging. The black pillar symbolizes strength and the willingness to create from scratch, from nothingness. The white pillar symbolizes wisdom, which is new beginnings and the ability to navigate through many difficulties and corruptions without losing our focus on what is good. The lilies carved around the top of the, of the pillars also emphasize new beginnings, but they add an awareness, and that awareness is that no new beginnings can be begun without new intellectual beginnings. You need a new consciousness, in other words. Lilies also symbolize the purity and trust of childhood, as well as the garden of abundance to which we all long to return. So the message here is that the garden is within. It's within the mind and the heart, and it must be cultivated there. Next, we come to the cross on the chest of the high priestess and the blue background. The cross symbolizes a crossroads. It also represents the intersection of perception and action. While the blue background calls for clarity of purpose. What are we doing? What should we be doing? Are we at a crossroads with Joe Biden? Are we at a crossroads with our nation? Do we trust what we see, hear, and feel? Or 
Are we placing our trust in what someone else wants us to see, hear, and feel? Is uh, trusting ourselves and knowing what we need to do, quote unquote, the essence of what we are learning from Joe Biden? What will happen if we are willing to see clearly and let our actions flow from our hearts? The heart is a very patient and loving teacher. And because the cross is situated over the heart of the high priestess, this tells us that we are our own best teachers. Don't let somebody tell you how to think. The high priestess warns against drowning in emotions. And she demands that we develop and raise our existence to new levels. She says, we must not sacrifice our strength or our gentleness and compassion. We need both. We need the, all three, the strength, the gentleness, and the compassion. And we need them in order to become our true self, a self that is resourceful and capable of seeing what is, a self willing to step back and assess what's needed. Then, drawing on our great power to create, using intuition, strength, and creativity. So this card has another meaning also that we should be aware of. Um, so when the high priestess comes up in relation or in response to a question about learning, whether that's learning in a deep personal relationship, a business, or a national situation. It signals the beginning of a very long nine to 10 year cycle that emphasizes a process of creative self-sufficiency. Let me say that again. When the high priestess comes up in response to a question about learning, or that that learning is in a deep personal relationship, a business, or a national situation, it signals the beginning of a very long, nine to 10 year long cycle that emphasizes a process of creative self-sufficiency, reorganization, and new individuation. This is a long period of self-examination and deciding who we are and who we are not. Are we seeing that happening in our country right now? Who are we and who are we not? The result is the emergence of a whole new identity. That says a lot right there. On a national scale, that's huge. While this new identity is emerging, be aware that there is little tolerance for limitation, restriction, or being restrained. Little tolerance for limitation, restriction, or being retained, restrained. Quite often in this decade long process, there is a need to, quote, be on one's own during this period because the usual supports are not available. Other times, it's because we just have to move away from disharmony and fighting. Let me say that again. Quite often, there is a need to be on one's own during this period sometimes because the usual supports are just not available. In other words, you're on your own. And other times because you just have to move away from disharmony and fighting. This card is also related to the judgment card, card number 20 in the major arcana. 
This is also a major arcana card. It means it's a major issue and we're learning something major in this situation with Joe Biden. Um, so it relates to the judgment card, number 20, which symbolizes the last judgment. Now, the judgment card depicts a number of people standing in caskets, arms raised, looking to the heavens as if they have suddenly awakened or been raised from the dead. Both cards call for deep discernment and the awareness of a shared history that may call for us to stop spending time judging and criticizing others. Instead, we are to assess what is salvageable and what is not, and then work to motivate and inspire one another to create something new. That's a pretty powerful message. We are left with a few more questions. Is Joe Biden forcing us to see that something new must be created in and for the U.S.? What can be salvaged from the mess in Washington, D.C.? Certainly the Constitution. I'm not sure what else. Are we entering a phase of learning that forces us to take responsibility for what we project onto the screen of reality and at the same time understand the nature and power of consciousness? Are we in a period of growing up, of maturing, that will require us to be more self-sufficient in terms of food, water, energy, governance, healing, and education. This is a card about learning to trust ourselves, trust your intuition, trust what you know from within. Are we learning to trust ourselves and one another? The high priestess requires us to take heed of what our inner voice is telling us. So, I suggest we listen. And that's the end of the question about Joe Biden and the high priestess. The second question, what do we need to know about the alternative media and what is their role at this time? That actually came out of, of a, a mindset or just this thought. Um, we've got these forces that are working on us. You know, let's look more deeply at, at both of those. Joe Biden and all the stuff he's doing and the alternative media and all the stuff they're pulling in the other direction. Um, and I think we had looked at the mainstream media back in maybe December. Um, and what we were learning from that, or what, you know, I think the question was, what do we need to know about mainstream media? So now the question is, what do we need to know about the alternative media and their role? And the card drawn was the Page of Pentacles. So <laughs> I found it quite interesting that the question about media resulted in a card drawn from the suit of pentacles. Because the motto of pentacles is, the truth is what bears fruit. Mm -mm. The truth is what bears fruit. And that's what alternative media has been focused on, ostensibly, anyway. So it's rather, <laughs> the card is really appropriate for questions involving media. Overall, the Page of Pentacles card represents beginnings, hard work, and eventual, eventual mastery. In fact, all of the Page cards, whether it's Page of Pentacles, the Page of Swords, Cups, uh, whatever, Wands, 
um, they represent uh, this, this kind of analogy. The young person who is just out of school and setting out in the world of work. It represents the apprentices, the beginners. Okay, so if you look at the card here, what you see is a male figure wearing a green tunic, having some pretty raggedy sleeves. There's a, a big red headdress on his head and brown leggings and boots. He's standing in the middle of a field where some soil in the lower right corner looks like it has been recently cultivated, tilled up. He's holding up a pentacle with both hands and gazing at it reverently. There's a blue mountain in the, in the distance, a clump of trees behind him, and the entire sky is yellow. So the green tunic, let's look at that. The green tunic represents both good and bad. On the good side, it represents growth, naturalness, freshness, and hope. But green also symbolizes immaturity, a lack of experience, false hope based on idealism, and being a greenhorn. <laughs> so the fact that the alternative media is pretty green and possibly immature raises such questions as, do you trust the alternative media? Even though they do not have lots of money for on-the-ground research, they're often working alone. <laughs> Are they worth listening to, even though they lack experience? What if they are spewing false hope? Okay, those are things to consider. And moving on with a tunic, the raggedy sleeves point to roughness and an absence of polish and professionalism. And all of that is certainly relevant when it comes to alternative media which is relatively new compared to the very polished legacy media, also known as mainstream media. So our page here is standing in the middle of a field. And since our question is about media, this refers to the field of news, journalism, and the dissemination of information. The area behind him looks like it was recently cultivated, and this indicates that alter alternative media is relatively new, and those in it have just gotten started. The tilling of soil also symbolizes an overturning of the ground. That's a big deal. It likely refers to the fact that alternative media has overturned a lot of mainstream media. CNN, for example, has lost a huge number of viewers in just the last couple of years. The tilling of the ground also represents a massive effort. Tilling is big work. Turning over the ground is big work. Um, a massive effort to do the groundwork that allows for a successful planting of the seeds of something new. Is that something new, a citizen's media that is honest and truthful? Is it something more, like a whole new view of what's really happening in our country, in our world, and on our planet? The page is holding up a pentacle. And he's gazing at it almost reverently, so expectantly, as if it's very fragile, as if he really can't quite believe it's real. And the way he's holding his hands indicates that something is being offered. And if he's true to the energy of this card, what is offered is, quote, truth gained through slow and patient discovery. 
In other words, the page becomes eventually the king, but in the beginning, he's pretty much doing all the groundwork. He's trying to figure out how things work. Okay. The hands also hint at a couple of other things. First, hands symbolize the handling of something. Okay. This points to the fact that people in alternative media must handle their information very carefully. They must hold a delicate balance because of the pressure of censorship. The hands remind those in alternative media that they cannot leave out important information because they're afraid of being shut down or deplatformed. Pentacles are about truth, intuition, and reality, the material physical reality. Those in alternative media must handle the truth creatively, trusting their intuition and the intuition of their audience to read between the lines while helping to shape the reality that is emerging. It's a big job. Second, the hands hint at the fact that those in alternative media may be deeply surprised at what they've been able to accomplish so far. It may feel uncertain, fragile, and not quite real to them. And this may be a source of great stress. That's kind of the, you know, the downside of this card. Um, however, they are handling the situation as best they can. And they've been critical to shining the light on the truth of what is unfolding. Thank God. The page is wearing a somewhat dramatic uh, red headdress, kind of like a hat with a scarf on it, and et cetera. And that symbolizes passion, will, eagerness, and exaggerated emotions. The message here is that those offering alternative viewpoints are going forward with great confidence and passion, pursuing the truth and developing one's talents, but they may be relying too much on drama and disturbing emotions. You have to discern carefully. There's a lot of disturbing stuff happening. How do you tell that? Or how do you get that information out there without distorting it and with, you know, without being accused of just being a uh, Debbie Downer? So um, let me say that again. Um, they may be relying too much on drama and disturbing emotions, and they will eventually have mastery and success. However, there is a warning against arrogance and a failure to do their due diligence. The beginner has to do their due diligence. So um, let's look at the brown. Brown is the color of business. There's brown boots, brown leggings, and like a brown undergarment here. Brown is the color of business. And the brown leggings and boots point to hard work and much effort to get the alternative media business rolling. It signals the amount of work it takes to put out the news, to stay on top of developing situations while appearing professional and presenting information in a way that can be quickly and easily grasped by their audience all while pretty much working alone. They don't have whole uh, newsrooms behind them. Maybe one or two supporters. Um, okay, the landscape around the page has wildflowers growing in it. All kinds of them. The wildflowers symbolize the flowering of skills and talents that become many little treasures in life. These little news organizations 
are becoming little treasures and they are bestowing little treasures of truth on us. The clump of trees in the background is a very interesting symbol here. Trees represent the family, including the family of man. This clump of trees represents the effort to keep the family together, to keep the community together, or the country together. By offering information that is accurate, and helps people to maintain the bonds that are necessary for avoiding violent confrontations and war. It's our bonding that keeps us out of bondage. The blue mountain in the distance represents the challenge faced by those in alternative media and indicates the ongoing need for clarity and effort. There's always something new happening. It's a never-ending mountain. Okay. Finally, we come to the yellow sky. And the yellow sky represents an intellectual environment, consciousness, and the search for meaning. That's what yellow means. Intellectual environment, consciousness, and the search for meaning. So the pentacle and the sky are the same color here. And this symbolizes the difficulty of trying to discern the outlines of truth. The message here is that you can only discern truth through the hard work of life and experience. The challenge here is similar to the old saying, you will know them by their fruits. Where have we heard that before? So that's it for our second question regarding alternative media. So let's uh, sum up here. Uh, question number one, can we get some insight into Joe Biden and what we were to learn from him? Uh, the card drawn was the high priestess who represents all living things. And the natural intuition each must use in order to survive. Her basic message is, quote, other people's advice will not help here. Go inside, develop your own opinion, and then live by it. That's what's going to teach you. The High Priestess, which I mentioned was possibly the most powerful card in the tarot deck, reminds us of the great power of intuition and consciousness. She also asks us to look at how we use these intuition and consciousness, how we use these uh, to project our ideas and dreams onto the screen of reality. She tells us that the task at hand is to use intuition and discernment to create the world we need, but warns that we may have to nourish ourselves from deep inner sources while that creative work is in process. She represents a decade-long process of reorganization and renewal and says that we will have to become more self-sufficient if we're going to make it through that period. We are to remain strong and assertive while being open and receptive to the knowings coming from within the self and those coming from those around us. She's telling us we're going to have to work together. So the second question, summing up, what do we need to know about the alternative media and their role at this time? The card drawn was the Page of Pentacles. And this card essentially points to the fact that a whole new form of information sharing, community information sharing, is developing. The page points out that what the alternative media lacks in polish and professionalism, they make up for 
in enthusiasm and energy. And they do. The warning was that the alternative media needs to guard against leaning a little too much on the side of drama, but they are committed to truth. They are mostly greenhorns and represent the beginnings of what can be called the citizen media. And they're generally honest and truthful, but must do their due diligence. Um, the card of the Page of Pentacles encourages intellectual development and analysis of the news and suggests that those in the alternative media are searching for the meaning of what they see while also helping the population to develop their own meanings from what is presented to them. And that's very different from the uh, effort of the mainstream media and the narrative to force people to draw the conclusions that they want us to draw. So let me say that again. Alternative media are helping the population to develop their own meanings from what is presented to them. And it hints that many new small businesses have been born from the alt media and that those who have been so passionate about presenting truth have also been surprised at how successful they have been, which I think is wonderful. So that's it for February and the February Tarot. Thank you so much for listening. I think we are slowly turning the corner. And I wish you peacefulness, courage, and gratitude for one another. Enjoy life to the fullest. And keep one toe in the soup. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful February. <music>